Hey everyone, Sir Terwin here again, and today we're gonna continue our showcase of OPO sets. This time, showcasing Green Black Perona, which is one of our new OPO sets leaders. And I'm sorry that I didn't have my mouse over the card to begin with, but yeah. So today we're gonna do a deck breakdown, and just like always, we're gonna have some gameplay, and then over the next today, you're gonna see more gameplay of us playing this leader. Now, what does Perona do? Perona is a very interesting leader. When you when you play her, once per turn on your turn, you're able to either rest one of the opponent's characters with cost of four or less, or give up to one of your opponent's characters minus one cost this turn. For the most part, you're almost always, almost always gonna use the first effect, just resting the opponent's character, and kind of play this deck that can kind of play more for board for for board presence and kind of just play this slower style of gameplay where you just completely clear the opponent's board while building your own and slowly shipping away at their life that's kind of gonna be like your general game plan there are some rare instances where you are going to do go for the cost reduction if you want to combine that with something like a ryuma or even something like a brook but for the most part again you're usually always going to rest it and that's where the power of this leader comes in because you're able to rest those very annoying blockers think of like rebecca Think of Borsalino, these four cost blockers that these blue Sakasuki players or these Gekko Mora players like to hide behind. They don't matter. They don't matter because you can just rest them and punch right through them. So that's what makes this 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 leader very powerful and why he recently started taking some wins in the Asian meta uh, before OP or sits and so let's talk about the rest of the deck though, right? So again, because we are resting stuff with Perona. We play two at strikes, which lets us just KO any of the opponent's rested characters that are full cost or less. So you can always just rest with Perona, play at strike to KO it, and then still be able to attack for five with Perona if you so choose to into the opponent's life. You can also do the same thing with Ryuma. And Ryuma is probably one of the most important cards of this deck, and that's why we play four of. It's the same thing as Ed Strike, except that it costs one less, and it has the additional effect that, the, that when this card gets KO, it can KO another of your opponent's rested four cost or lower cards. So if the opponent uses a four cost card to trade with this Ryuma, you're able to just kind of trade right back with it, which can be very powerful and very annoying for opponents to deal with. So, so these two cards kind of let you combo out, allowing you to just, again, KO those rested characters that the opponent has. Because, like I said, this is a very slow kind of methodical deck, we do play four 10 cost of flamingos, especially because you're able to rest the opponent's smaller characters. It's not difficult for you to actually get value from this stuff flamingo. And I was, I, I will say that most of the times you're winning games because you drop down this stuff flamingo and just gave yourself enough time to just punch through the opponent's defenses while keeping yourself alive. So very key card, and that's why we play four of them. We also play four Rosinante here as the blocker. And part of the reason that Rosinante is good is because you can always bring him back with Gekko Mora. And even though he comes down rested, it kind of gives you protection against stuff like Lushi when you have another rested unit at the same time. Because now the opponent, if the opponent tries to target that other rested unit, the Rosinante can actually save it with his ability. So it's not diff it's not bad to sometimes play this uh, with your Gekko Mora, even if it's rested. But overall, it's just nice because it's also a nice two-cost blocker that just gives you a lot of value. Because we are playing Quadruple Duffy and Quadruple Rosinante, we also get to play Baby 5. So this is going to be one of the searches for our deck. It lets us search for a Don Quixote card, including itself. So it gives we, we have enough hits for it between the four Dofis, the four Rosinantes. We play four Burgos, which are just 2k counters, which can be searched by both Brand New and Baby 5. And then we also even have two of the Whoever Wins This War event. So we do have enough hits for Baby 5 to kind of be worth it. Because again, most of our games, we want to get this 10 cost Dofi. So that's what Baby 5 is here for, to try to get us that Dofi no matter what. We talked about Ryuma, we play some Kusans here, it gets us a little bit of draw and can potentially synergize with our leader ability by allowing us to do minus four into a high cost unit and then us being able to rest it with Perona. Especially cool if you're able to have this in your trash and you play Mora into Kusa and you get that draw, but not only that, but now you're setting up so that on the next turn when you have 10 done, you can go Kusan, do minus four, rest whatever the high cost unit was, and then play Dolphy to make it so that it cannot re back up. 
Here we have another 2K, right? So the 2Ks are Suru, we talked about Burgo, and we also have Tashigi. So we're playing 10 2Ks here. Uh, the Suru can be searched with the brand new, same thing with your Tashigi. Then we have our blockers. Aside from the Rosinante, we also play quad, four, cuatro, cuatro Borsalinos and four Sabos, right? So the Borsalino, of course, cannot get KO by stuff like Lushi, cannot get KO by stuff like opponent Ryuma if we're going against a Perona deck. So that's what makes this really powerful. However, at four cost, it can be vulnerable to stuff like Amaru, right? So that is why we play Sabo as well. Sabo lets us fit our hand because our hand can sometimes get a little bit awkward while also giving us another blocker to protect ourselves and, and, and a blocker that cannot be rested by Amaru or even by Perona. So it kind of gives you some value against those matchups specifically. Then again, brand new searcher similar to Baby 5. We have all these Navy hits between the Borsalino, Burgo, uh, Tashigi, Suru, and Kusan to make sure that we're not whiffing on this too much. Uh, also, the Ed Strike counts as a Navy card as well. So you can also get that from brand new. Lastly, I guess to kind of finish up, obviously, a Cosmora similar to Ardo Flamingo is going to be one of our big game finishers. The advantage with this Gekko Mora is that you can choose to bring back Ryuma to be able to KO the opponent's rest of the character. So sometimes, you know, Moria can be awkward because you feel like you're gonna leave your opponent's character alive, but imagine that the opponent has a Lushi. You can rest the Lushi with your Perona leader, play Moira, and be able to bring back Ryuma to KO that Lushi, even if you're not really attacking into it. And you still get to bring something else, which is most likely gonna be Rosinante, brand new, or sometimes Baby 5, if you have no other better choice to play. And then we do play Brook. Uh, it's a little bit of a tech card here. So this card says you can play, put up to one of your opponent's characters of four, cost of four or less into their trash, or your opponent puts three cards from their trash to the bottom of the deck in any order. Sometimes that second effect can be useful if the opponent's Moira or Sakasuki are having kind of like slow starts when they don't have a lot of stuff into the trash. Using this brook can be kind of cool at preventing a potential Lushi from triggering in the future. So it's a way to kind of mess up the opponent's discard since we have all these all this decks that kind of rely on that trash pile now. But then the other ability is put up to one opponent's character into the trash. And this is key because it doesn't say KO, right? Which means that you can actually just send a Borsalino straight to the trash. You can send a Sabo straight to the trash because you can do minus one with your Perona ability and then go for the Brook. That's one of the rare instances where this Perona minus one can come into play because you can do minus one, get, get an opponent's Sabo to four, and then play Brook to send it right to the trash. Because it's not a KO, it doesn't get stopped by the Borsalino or by the Savo skill. And that's what kind of can make this Brook really powerful in certain situations. And then lastly, the last two cards are just going to be the events, which again, our hands can be a little bit awkward because we do play a lot of these 10 drops, a lot of these 8 drops, a lot of cards that don't have any counter like Ryuma and Kusan. So sometimes playing this event can save us uh, if we find ourselves in a sticky situation with little to no counter. Again, overall, the deck plays kind of like really slow and methodical, just kind of clearing the opponent's board with the Perona ability. You can, you can just fill your board with Gecko and the Flamingo and just chip away at the opponent's life from there. So, yeah, today's games, we're going to, talking about Moira so much, we're going to have two games against Gecko Moira, and then we're also going to have one game against a blue Do Flamingo player. And these games can kind of show you what I'm talking about and how you can navigate and kind of play with this deck. So hope you enjoy the games coming up soon. If you do, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post One Piece videos every single day. Enjoy the games. In this match, we're going against Gecko Moira. I really like the Rosinante. Ah, uh, sorry, the, I did the Flamingo. The problem is that the Rosinante doesn't do much in this matchup. I think I won the Ryuma. So unfortunately, okay, this is the Ryuma at least. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to just kick it. I will grab this Kusan, not because I have any other choice. <laughs> yeah, we'll grab the Kusan here. The point is gonna go ahead and start doing their shenanigans, right? To get a Gekko more in the trash, get to play Perona. I need to trash a car. I need to trash a car. You know what's funny? That we can always play this Brook to mess the opponent up. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it and just drop the Ryuma down. To get rid of that Perona for now. 
Go five. Opponent takes the life. Go Ryuma, KO Perona, pass the turn. No Absalom yet, it's good for us. We can go Kusen and brand new next turn. I just wanted to have the Ryuma as a big attacker that can heal anything that the opponent plays, right? Opponent could try to KO this if they have an Absalom and the discount to kill it. Okay, so I was thinking of playing this, but now I feel like I just want to... I guess I can go... Hmm. Interesting. Let's give you the 1k. Meteor, Meteor, but then Meteor and then just hard play Absalom. Oh, it's just Lucy. Okay. They have no cards in their discard now. All right, so they have no cards in their discard. I guess I'm gonna gift them. If I play this, I gift them the Lucy. I play them, I give them this Lushi, but I feel like I want to give it to that Lushi. Oh, I want to have this. I want to have this guy in the field, and then just go Kusan Borsalino next time. If I attack for seven, I don't think it's gonna be enough. Yeah, if I attack for seven, I don't think it's gonna be enough, and then the opponent's gonna be just bring it back. So. um... Let's go like this. Five. Have the opponent give me the 1k. And then we'll go like this. Send this to the trash and just go. I think I'm just going to play this as aggressive as possible, especially since I don't have the Doflamingos. I'm just going to try to get rid of as many cards as the opponent. Uh, like, the opponent has no cards right now to be able to play Lushi. I guess, technically, if they go for the more ability first, they will get enough. Yeah, yeah, sure. Next turn, we can go Gecko into Ryuma into uh, Branu. The trash? Oh, they forced me to trash. Uh, yeah, let's trash this and we'll give you the 2k. So we can KO this really easily. Okay, so is it Perona or is it Rebecca? We, we're going to play. We're going to play. Gecko, right? We're gonna play Gecko, but then the opponent's gonna play their own Gecko in response, right? So the opponent gets to play their own Gecko in response. Um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get rid of the Perona. I'm gonna get rid of the Perona instead of the Rebecca, and let the opponent block with the Rebecca if they want to. I'm not scared of the Rebecca. I guess it does allow the opponent to replay this Perona from their trash, which is going to continue forcing me to... Um, I guess I don't have five cards anymore, so it's not killing a card anymore. Okay, so they counter. We'll go here. They block. And now we go like this. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll grab the Burgo. I guess Teniki Tashigi is better because Tashigi could potentially allow me to rest a Sabo, which we know the opponent has Sabo in their hand. But uh, the opponent's going to have to play their own Moira and go for Rebecca, right? Moira into Rebecca into getting a cart into their hand. They didn't, yeah, because the fact that they didn't use the Gecko ability, oh, it's just Kus but Kusan just dies. Kusan just gets kill. I guess he doesn't get kill here. I absolutely get rid of this Kusan, right? We can just rest it. Yeah, we can just rest it and attack it for 9. If the opponent wants to save it, be my guess. Like, what did you expect to happen here? I'm not going to let that Kusan stay alive, because that's the way that you kill my Gecko. Okay, so. We can play both of these, or we can just play Rocinante, but the Rocinante gets punished by the Absalom, although the opponent hasn't seen the Absalom. He also gets punished by Lucy. So I think it's going to be Borsalino, which leaves me with Sid Stone. 
And we have to always attack for six. So six leaves me with five done after that. I guess let's go like this. Let's go seven. And we'll go eight and eight. Okay, so I just I just kill the Sabo now, right? Yeah, I think I just killed the Sabo. And maybe the opponent wanted me to do that, and that's why they went for it. Yeah, they gave me the 2k counter there, and uh, then we'll play this Porcelino and the turn. There are two life. I have one, two, three, four, five attackers for potentially for next turn. Any blocker that they play that's less than Sabo, we can rest it with Rebecca. Uh, with, with Perona. I don't know why I said Rebecca. So even if they have their own Moira, they can at most go for Rebecca. Again, I guess they could go for the Lushi if they have the discounts. But yeah, they would have to have they would have to have like Ice Age and Great Eruption, right? So Ice Age here, Great Eruption, then you go Moira. And you go Lushi, and you KO both. And, and also get to like play your Sindri out if you want to. I mean, six cards is not nothing. And again, I don't have the Dolphy. So it's not impossible for the opponent to actually be able to, to kind of recover from this. Because I have to be very aggressive. Very aggressive. The problem is, again, that their blockers, aside from Sabo, are not important. So that's the struggle that the opponent has, that they cannot hide behind blockers. And this is where Perona can do well versus Sakasuki and Gekko. And Gekko Mora is because we're able to rest their Rebecca's, we're able to rest their Borsalinos. The only blocker that we cannot rest is Sabo. So they cannot just hide behind blockers like they usually do against every other deck, right? Usually they hide, they hide, and then just have all this value with the black cards, right? They can't do that against us. So he ends up being really unfortunate for them. I mean, it's a hard turn for the opponent, so I'm gonna just wait it out a little bit longer. What else could they do aside from, like the Mora gives them at most one blocker or at most lets them, get, lets them kill two units. Okay, so that's the Ice Age, like I said, right? Isuru. And then you go Moira into Lushi. Wow, it's like I told you guys that was going to happen, right? The problem is that it wasn't Great Eruption. So the opponent had to actually give up a 2k card from their hand to be able to do that. And uh, yeah, we can just block this. Now, 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 now. Three cards in hand, two cards in life. We have two attackers. The other option now is that we can just play Gecko into Ryuma into brand new, right? So like we can go like this. I guess we can actually go ahead and push. Hmm. What if we actually play this Rosinante? Or is the opponent do, do they have the Absalom here? They haven't found the Absalom, right? I was thinking if I want to attack for seven. Maybe we do maybe we do attack for seven. I don't think I need the Rosinante. I think we attack for seven. It's gonna be two cards from their hand. And they give me the two cards. So then we attack for nine. And then we drop this guy. Uh, yeah, we triggered this, kill the Lushi, and here we can get... I'll grab the 2k. I don't think I need another blocker for now. And this is just trying to set it up for next turn. Because now that the opponent did the Ice Age once, I don't think they can do the same combo again. Not only that, but they just show me a Moira from their hand. So they need to have Ice Age and a second Moira in their hand to do the same thing again. And I don't think they can do it. So, like, we just put them in the same situation they were at last turn. Except that it's worse now, because if they don't kill me here, instead of having just one Mora, now we have two Moras to attack with. And you only have one life. So you have one life less, and we have an extra big 9k attacker. So, because we're at three life, we can play safe. Because, again, we know that the opponent has nothing that they can do here. Yeah, they go for this, and we can just give them a 1k.
And what are you gonna do? Okay, so they, okay, I'll take this. Second Moira then. Rebecca? Ah, they get to play Sabo. So they get to, re you know, but the problem here is that Rebecca gets rested. Rebecca gets rested, right? So no matter what happens here, Rebecca gets rested by Perona. Opponent has one blocker. They have to trash two cards with Sabo, right? So let's say that they trash, well, they have to trash a 2K counter, right? So they trash these two cards. And the moment I see a 2K counter being trashed, I know the last two cards that the opponent has a 2K, right? But even then, we can play around the 2Ks, right? So we rest the Rebecca. Opponent has one blocker, one life. We just attack for nine. The nine is gonna push the block of the life. Then we attack for nine again. And even if, like, we attack for nine, if opponent doesn't block and take the life, then they go down to zero life. They have three cards. They can block the second nine, but then they go down to zero card, and we still have one, two, three, four attackers left that can just kill the opponent, right? So the opponent had a Hail Mary here trying to kill the Mora, hoping that I didn't have any counters at all. But unfortunately, it just wasn't meant to be my friend. So, GG's. In this match, we're going against Gecko Mora. All right, so we'll go second. Double Dofi. Oh. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to greet this out. I'm going to greet this out. I'm going to keep it. Oh, and we get the brand new too? Absolutely. Sign me up. Oh, well, we got one of the more rest out in the bottom. Uh -uh -uh. Yeah, what about like this? We get the 2K counter. We can rest anything that they open in place here, like they're brand new. So now we can attack. We can attack their brand new with our brand new. Unless the opponent got an Absalom here. They didn't get the Absalom. And even if they did, they wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. Uh, do we take it? Do we take it? That's the million dollar question. I'll give you the 2k. I should have given them the Suru. Because the opponent knows I have Suru. Yeah, so we go like this. Kill the brand new. And down to play... And down to play this... Uh, and now to play this uh this Rosinante. So attack them for seven. I think they're always taking this anyways. And then we go like this. Next one we're gonna set up for a Ryuma, or we can go for a Sabo, whichever one I think. Might be better. I think we take this one set skate damage that the opponent's about to throw at us. If they have the Absalom, then I guess that's good for them. Like the, the annoying part about Absalom is that it's gonna continue going to the discard. And it's going to be able to kill my Ryuma, right? We can attack five twice, brand new and Perona. While also being able to play the Ryuma. Yeah, so we take the sets. Ooh, the opponent didn't activate the ability. I guess they do have... They're just going to play... Okay, wait, what? Ah... Hmm. The problem here. So the problem with us trying to go after this right now. I really wanted to get value from this, but I guess I'll just go for it. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I guess we might as well just go full 11 if they're like, yeah, I'm just letting them have this in the discard, right? I need to be more aggressive. I guess since I have the Dofis, I don't need to be that aggressive just yet. We can tell the opponent that you really want to save this Borsalino because the Borsalino doesn't get killed by the Ryuma. So I think I want to give it to the Borsalino first. The opponent gets the Sindri and they finally get their Absalon. They do have two Moras, but they already have the Hog back so they can get the Moras back. I wonder if they go for Absalom or more right here. Because I feel like he actually... I mean, sorry, for Hogback. I feel like it actually makes more sense to go for the Hogback. So that you can get your Mora back into your hand. So that you can play it on curve next turn. Unless you already have another Mora in your hand. Then if that's the case, you just play the Absalom here. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay, so they're gonna go for the Absalom. So you have... So that means you have the third more right in your hand, right? Otherwise, I feel like that makes no sense. But maybe I'm the one that's wrong. Let's go here. I actually like this Kusan. Hmm. I kind of like this Kusan. Because if the opponent plays for their Moira, they don't have a Suru. So they need to have a Moira and a Suru in their hand. For them to be able to KO the Kusan. If they play the Moira here, with the Kusan, we can actually rest it. And then, okay, so I guess this works as well. Because now you can play the third Moira that you have in your hand. I forgot about Grey Eruption, right? So Grey Eruption or Suru, both could have done it. And now you get to play your Moira here and do your thing. It wasn't Moira, so it's just Absalom. So it's just Absalom again. And of course, there's no reason for us to uh, play Dolphin next time then. Like, we can just go Sabo. Okay. I still think you need... I still think the opponent needed to play that Hog back last turn, by the way. Because if you... Like, you needed to have that Gecko, right? You needed to have that Gecko. Now that you don't have it, it's going to be a little bit more risky. So they trash the Perona. They play a second Perona. They go, oh, they have Lushi. So they have Lushi here instead. Okay. Sure. Do we ever play Dofi then? Right? Do we ever play Dofi here then? Because we can rest the Lushi. I guess we don't need to anymore. We can go. We can just go Ryuma. Ryuma into Sabo. Uh, let's go like this. I could attack into them and bait our car. Does that make sense? I think we bait our car. Wait. Mm. Opponent can continue getting value. No, I think I think we need to start putting pressure. So I think we go sits, and if the opponent wants to give me the 2k counter, they can give me the 2k counter. Yeah, let's go like this. And uh, let's go Sabo. And uh, yeah, let's send away this. And this. This protects me against any Absalom shenanigans. Opponent gets a Rebecca. That's too easy for us to rest. You can get a Lushi back to your hand, I guess, and set this up for another turn. <coughs> yeah, the Rebecca is too easy for us to deal with. Um, the opponent still has a lot of attacks here, though, and, and I'm kind of like... I guess if they attack with the Perona, it makes my Dofi efficient. Yeah, they finally go for the Hogback, right? So you finally go for the Hogback. You play the Hogback. You don't have enough done to play the Gecko ability, so you can go hog back, get the Moira to your hand, and start doing your shenanigans from there. I'm still thinking maybe I should have played Dofi last turn. Kusan? It's not what you need. So you still don't have Moira in your hand. So you still don't have this Moira in your hand. So we can go counter, counter. If you attack with Perona, it's too easy for me to just get rid of her. Uh, we're still going to go ahead and rest this, right? Yeah, we'll go five. We'll go six. And we'll play Lucy. Uh, sorry, we'll play Dofi. And let's start again. When it's at two life, we have Dofi. We can play another Dofi, get them uh, rested again. Because the Kusan is rested, it cannot attack. So you don't get to do the shenanigans that you wanted to do there. Uh, you still don't have the Mora in your hand unless you got the third one in one of these life hits. I, said that, I thought I saw two Moras going to their discard. Maybe it's just one. Maybe it's just one. So it's not, it's not unlikely for them to have a Mora. 
yeah, it's not unlikely for them to have it. They're choosing not to attack with this Perona because they were playing around the Dolphy. He ends up not mattering because the benefit of Perona is that even if the opponent tries to play around the Dolphy, because Perona gets to rest their units, it really doesn't do anything. Their, their uh, Mora is not even that good anymore right now. I guess they could have Lushi, right? Lushi could be a problem. But he's not killing my the Flamingo unless you have Ice Age. We still have two 2k counters and a, a bet that can be a counter as well. You don't get the value with this anymore. So anything in your trash, you're not, you don't have access to it. And I have triple Dofi, so. I, did, I think I did wait a little bit too long. Maybe playing that Dofi on that on a turn that the opponent got Lushi would have been better than the Ryuma. Uh, but I did kind of like the Sabo as well. So maybe not, maybe this is okay. Because we got to develop Ryuma and Sabo, so it gave me like an extra attacker for the turn that just happened. If the opponent has their own Sabo, that's really the only one that's a little bit iffy. Because Sabo can not be rested by Perona. But uh, yeah, we're just going to continue going 5, 6, 10, Dofi. 5, 6, 10, 10, Dofi. Boom, boom, boom. And just eventually the opponent's going to run out of cards, run out of life, and we win the game. And I think they're starting to they're starting to realize how punishing this Dofi was. So yeah, so they're gonna be able to kill Sabo here. Potentially the Ryuma as well. If they kill the Ryuma, we can actually kill the Kusan. And just don't have to worry about it. And if the opponent attached to the Perona, we still get value from the Dofi. Even if they don't, we can always just rest the Rebecca. I guess I wanna make sure I don't die, right? Okay, yeah, so this is going to be another Lushi. Yeah, I want to make sure that I don't die. So... We probably need to rest... Hina, uh, probably need to rest the Lushi, right? Unless the opponent gives me this attack here. They have to do a lot of resources. They even send away a Tashigi. Like they have to like override their Tashigi here. And when this dies, we KO the Kusan. And we still have a 5 and a 10k attack for next turn. And you can attack with Perona. But if you attack with Perona, she gets rested. So the opponent doesn't do it. Uh, yeah, so let's just attack for 5. I don't need to worry about this Rebecca just yet, right? A opponent eventually is going to have to block with this Rebecca. Okay. What trigger are you playing? I guess uh, I guess Great Eruption. Yeah, so Great Eruption forces me to discard a card. Let's discard this. We rest the Lushi. And we go second Dofi. Opponent still has two attacks here, but I have two life. And the Rebecca is still alive, and the opponent still doesn't get value from their leader. And then next turn, we have two 10k attacks. And unlike the Sabo, you're not going to be able to get rid of those. I take this, right? How are you killing us? Are you going to attack with the Rebecca? I guess they have to go for it. I guess they have to go for it. I respect it. If they have another blocker, this could be a problem. Okay, so they can go up to seven. And they go up to seven and we just counter. Cool. Back for 10. One has to give me all three cards if they want to counter that. Back for 10 again. And then we can attack for 15. And that's the game. Yeah, unfortunately for the opponent, I just got my Dofis. I even had a third one ready to go. And yeah, they, they had to go all in here in this last turn. And it just wasn't enough. So, geez. In this match, we're going against Doflamingo. Uh, sure. Not bad. I like this. Two, four, putting gets Perona. Place on the top, cool. So two, four, eight, bringing the Ryuma back if the Ryuma dies. 
and also bringing the this back if this dies this Ryuma is so good. This Ryuma carries this deck. That's why a lot of times I'll keep the Ryuma. Just so that we can punish the opponent. Ah, yeah. Let's go ahead and play this. That's the turn. Here we go. Brandy will have been better here, but that's okay. Because Brandy will have a will have allowed me to attack into this Perona next turn. But we probably play something. We probably just go Ryuma into whatever the opponent plays, right? Because whatever the, this matchup is going to be bad for the opponent because everything that they play from the top of their deck, which they didn't even do anything here. Ha. Hmm. Okay, it's just Dofi. I was going to say, everything they play from their deck, we can just KO it with the Ryuma and the X-Ray. Uh, I think we go ahead and rest it, attack it for five. Uh, no, let's let's just go for their life. Let's just go for their life, because if the opponent doesn't counter out of that, then we don't get the value from this, right? So let's just go pop. Yeah, we'll rest it. Attack the opponent for five, then play Ryuma, KO the Do the, the, uh, the Flamingo. Boom. Boom. Next. What's next? It's such a kind of straightforward deck to play. The opponent has played three cards in a row that, sh that, that like, put their deck, like, a little bit differently, right? Opponent gets to draw a card here. This is also a blocker, huh? We can KO this with Ed Drake, kill the blocker with Perona, and still have one down to attack the opponent for seven. Yeah, we'll kill the blocker. Attack you for seven. And get rid of Mr. Wibble. And now we still have two 6k attackers. So like just like that, I slowly get rid of the opponent's board while developing my own stuff. Um, let's give it the 1k. It's so weird. Ooh. Gravity's raging tide. All right, all right. I respect it. Um Do we care about this Perona? Try to see how I want to play this. We'll go like this. The second Dofi is tempting, but the I don't think the point. I mean, I guess we play the second Dofi. Let's just grab the second Dofi. I want to make sure that this doesn't die to just Perona. So I do think we have to go ahead and kill this here. Yeah, let's go ahead and just kill it. Then we go Sabo. I was thinking about keeping a Don in case I didn't need to play another one here, but that's fine. Let's go like this. We have Moira into Dofi, into Dofi, Dofi, and I think opponent's gonna just get punished by that. Next time we can start with Moira first. We get to rest their Doflamingo here. The only downside is that we don't have Ryuma. I guess, honestly, mm, I think it might just be Dofi. It might just be 10 drop. Because I don't have anything I wanna play with Moira here. Because the opponent bottom deck, my other two units right so i never played around this event before place up to two cost sets cards in any order to borrow down or that right so so the human not being in the discard is so bad right because it means that the mora doesn't get to do anything the opponent gets <laughs> to go for 10. sure so here's the problem that the opponent's gonna have Okay, well, we also get the Ryuma anyways. But I was going to say, the problem that the opponent has is that I can just play Dofi here. Right? Like, I can just go Dofi. So we go 5. Get a card from you. Go 6. Get a card from you. Play Dofi. And you don't get your Dofi ability. Like, these leaders that need to attack to get their stuff off get so punished by Dofi. I wish I could trash this so I could bring it back with Ryuma. Ah, sorry. So I can bring it back with this. Ooh, that's hot. 
Mihawk? That's hot. That's hot. I like that. I like that very much. The opponent has set up their deck to do that. Okay. I mean, things look a little bit more dicey now, honestly. Like, things don't look too great. I guess I can just... Hmm. When is he has three life? So it's not like we can just do whatever. I might just have to play second Dofi. I might just have to play second Dofi and just force the opponent to stack. But it's too easy for them to counter the Perona and then to attack this Dofi with their units. And then we just lose the Dofi for no value anyways. So maybe it's going to depend on what we get here, I guess. Again, the problem is this Moira not giving me any value right now. That Ryuma getting sent back. Like, it would have been so much nicer if we had played Moira last turn instead of Dofi. I can bait the opponent to attack into us, I guess. Yeah, I just see this. This is not great. I guess I don't have to. I can always just get the baby five, right? I can always play the blockers out. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I can just play the Ryuma. And, I, and put the opponent at one HP. Maybe that's the play. Maybe we play Ryuma. And the opponent has three attacks. So Ryuma, and we can attack for three, nine. Ten and eleven. If we put the opponent at one. Ten. All right, let's go for it. Let's go 10. Then we go 11. Let's let let's get the opponent to 1 HP. Kill this blocker. Rest anything else that the opponent might play after. 11. If they couldn't block the 10, they probably could not block the 11 either. Then we go Ryuma. KO this. Pass the turn. We have only 4k counter value. Opponent has 1, 2, 3 attacks. 4 attacks potentially with this Mihawk. We have three life. They're probably gonna kill this Dofi though, right? That's 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 what I would do if I'm the opponent. But you have to go. The problem with Dofi is that they have to put enough down to kill it. And they do it. If I give them the double 2k, it's forcing the opponent to have to put two more down on this guy, which means that the opponent can at most only play something worth five costs. I think we go for it. Force the opponent to have to actually attack with the Sanji. And then, again, we can always play... Yeah, there we go, right? So this is great, because now anything that the opponent plays is going to be three costs or less. I guess I have to be careful that I don't die here. So the, pro the opponent's probably going to play a blocker. Yeah, we can rest that blocker. Uh, we have to rest, rest. I mean, we have to leave this two down for the count. Do I want this Doflamingo to get the attack off? Anything that they play here is going to be rested, right? So, I mean, getting the value from this Dofi is not going to matter for us. Because I want to I wanna, I wanna keep this Dofi rested so that if the opponent plays another blocker next turn, we still have be able to rest it as well. The other option is that we can just go attack it like this and just keep their other stuff rested. I guess we can also do it like that, right? We can just kill that, attack the opponent for five, develop the Dofi, and just do our thing next turn instead. Because if I go five, opponent's still going to have one, two, three attacks, and we don't have any... 
counters to actually punish that. So maybe we go six here. Okay. Whatever they have to save this can also save this, right? So I guess we just go for life. If the opponent takes it, they're not going to take this. They're just going to give me the 1k? Yeah. So then we go here, here, here. We only have a 1k value left. Uh, the opponent could find another blocker. But it has to be a blocker with five costs or more. Which there is. You, they could play the uh, the Ed Strike, right? The Ed Strike costs five now. Another Mihawk could be interesting. They're going to just kill the Ryuma. Ooh. That's true. This Mihawk lets them draw two and trash two. So we had to actually rest. We actually had to keep this one. I forgot that this card had an effect. I actually forgot that this card had an effect. I'll be completely honest. They digging, right? So I'm letting them dig so much. Red Rock? Why not Red Rock the Dolphy? Okay. I was going to say, why not Red Rock the Dolphy? That's why. Uh, we can have a blocker. Ryuma does nothing here. I guess it can KO the Perona. That's the best one, right? Playing Ryuma is the best one anyways. And then we play double blocker. Sure. Uh, the, if opponent finds the way to deal with the blocker, we lose the game. Yeah, I was thinking, I was like... I let them draw too much, right? Letting that Mihawk attack was a mistake that I forgot about. Completely forgot about it. Yeah, we KO this one. We play this one. We pass the turn. Four cards. Two cards on my end. Two 9k attacks. Opponent can go 9-9. Nine, nine. We have two life. They need to find a way to get rid of this, which can be a Thousand Worlds, a Red Rock, another Gravity Blade Ringing Tiger. No. No, but this doesn't help you. Because I can just rest that. So they're not killing us. They didn't have it. They didn't have it. I kind of feel bad. <laughs> They didn't have it. Um, they draw a card here, of course. That's what they have to go for. We'll take it. Yeah, at this point, we're going for Lito, right? We know we're going for Lito. So we just take anything that the opponent throws at us. Anything that the opponent throws at us, we're going to take it. Because we're going to go here. We're going to attack for nine. It's going to force the opponent to have to have three cards out of their hand. 2k, 2k, 1k. Okay. That's easy then, right? We just go seven. That makes the map easier because now we can just go seven. And then go 14. And unfortunately, that's all she wrote because... The blocker, that Rosinanta blocker, ended us clutching it out for us. And that is the game, even after we almost threw. So GG's. Hey, welcome back everyone. Hope you enjoyed those games of Perona. This deck is actually pretty difficult to play. I think I, I really started getting the hang of it uh, after a few games, but like, it, it's slow. I'm not used to playing kind of these slow decks. I feel like it's really slow. I mean, sometimes you can be very aggressive, right? When you have like this Moira plus Ryuma, and you get all this stuff on curve and you just have like a bunch of units in the field. But a lot of times you just kind of slowly play for this 10 cost Dofi to kind of lock down the opponent and then you slowly trickle down their life. And you kind of get to see that a couple times in today's games against Mora and the blue uh, Doflamingo player, right? So, so that's kind of what you want to do. Of course, we also have all these blockers that we can hide behind. And that's also what kind of makes this a leader that, that can be protected, that can protect itself and cannot be very annoying to deal with. So yeah, but... 
yeah, that's it with Perona. We have two more videos of Perona coming over the next two days. So if you want to keep up to date to that, with that, make sure to like it below and subscribe to us. We post One Piece videos every single day. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.